We are now joined by Vincent Mercagliano, who covers the Rangers for LowHud.com. And Vincent, conventional wisdom said this deal would get done by Wednesday. What were the final hurdles that needed to be cleared for the Rangers to finish this deal on Tuesday night? They had enough salary cap space to actually make the deal for Kane as soon as yesterday. But what they were waiting on in this final day or so was clearing enough salary cap space to also recall defenseman Braden Schneider, who they had to send down the other night in order to get back the accrual process on the pace where they needed for Kane. So Schneider was really the final piece they were waiting on on this. And once they passed 5 p.m. on Tuesday, then they officially had enough salary cap space to A, acquire Kane, and B, recall Schneider. Now, Kane and Artemi Panarin played together for two seasons in Chicago, and in their first year with the Blackhawks, Kane had an MVP season. So how well do you expect him to fit in with this blue shirt squad? Well, that's going to be the question, and everything I'm hearing is pointing to him getting a crack at playing with Panarin and Vincent Trocheck on whether you want to call it the second line or 1A, 1B. There is so much firepower up top for this Rangers team now, and you think about the skill that Kane brings. He's having a down season overall, but what we saw in those last four games with Chicago when he piled in 10 points over the course of four games, including seven goals, that really caught the attention of a lot of people around the league, and you know it caught the attention of the Rangers because it goes to show that this guy, even though he's 34 years old, when he's motivated, he can still be highly productive. And he certainly would be motivated coming to New York City. So in the span of fewer than three weeks, Chris Drury has handed Gerard Gallant, Patrick Kane, and Vladimir Tarasenko. So now how much pressure is there on Gallant to hand James Dolan the Stanley Cup? A lot. These are win now moves. The Rangers aren't probably going to be able to keep either of those guys next season because they're going to be tight on salary cap space again. And they have a lot of young players who they're going to prioritize signing. So the window for this team is now. They're looking at a potential really difficult first round matchup against the New Jersey Devils, who also made a big splash of their own this week. And then you look at the Eastern Conference top to bottom. The top six teams in the East right now are the top six teams record-wise overall in the entire league. So the playoffs are going to be a meat grinder, and the expectations are going to be almost unfairly high for all of those teams, Rangers included. But if they don't go far with the team that Chris Drury built, you can be sure that there will be a strong level of disappointment. Rangers are on the ice Wednesday against the Flyers, but the Patrick Kane era with the blue shirts begin on Thursday when New York hosts the Senators. Vincent Mercagliano, thanks for joining us on Honda Sports Night.